Welcome into episode six of the season four Halloween special. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own custom Polaroid frames. Honestly, this would work for Instax as well. But I'm gonna use Polaroid as a demonstration, utilizing a couple of methods. One being thermal label printers and stickers. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. Sit back and enjoy episode six. Let's get into it. First method I want to talk about is the label printers and ID print. I believe that's how you say it. ID P R T sent me this label printer not too long ago. If they sound familiar, well, because earlier in this year I did a video on a little printer, a pocketable label printer that they made, and it's still a really cool little product. And so they sent me this, and I was like, how the heck? Am I gonna make this work on my channel? <laughs> but then it resurrected an idea that I had a couple of years ago, and that is utilizing it to print custom frames for instant photos. And to do it, it's honestly really, really simple. All you gotta do is install the software on your computer, and then the one tricky part is, I cannot figure out how to get this to print in the right orientation just by right-clicking, selecting the printer, and print. It doesn't work that way. I don't know why, but it doesn't. So I use Photoshop to print, and it works through there flawlessly, after you install the drivers, of course. So I printed up this Hawkins National Lab photo. It just looks, I think, really cool. It looks kind of like what they would have used to take evidence photos in Joyce Byers' house. And just for fun, I was on a recent trip to Disneyland. I did a little shield. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you may notice this one doesn't look like it printed very well. Well, I noticed the print paper that it came with actually doesn't print that dark and it comes out looking a little bit like this. So I got some new ones uh, and these print a lot better. <laughs> now it's not perfect. You can still tell it's using a label printer, but it does get the job done and I think it still provides a pretty cool, unique look and a fairly inexpensive way to make custom frames, sort of. I got a stack of like 500 labels and I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. It was fairly inexpensive. Buy them on Amazon that is. If you try to buy these locally, for some reason for like 50 of these will cost you like $60. Why? I don't understand why, but you can get them on Amazon for really cheap. And I'll leave links in the description. The printer, however, is what will run you the most. This one, however, is about $150. However, I see it on sale all the time for around 80 to 90 bucks, which I think isn't a terrible deal for what you get. Now, it only prints in black and white. However, there is label paper that you can get that is colored. So you can get like reds, blues. I think I saw a yellow. I noticed those are actually a little bit more expensive. And you can't get them in like a variety color. You have to buy like a lot of them in bulk and it was like 50 60 bucks to get them all and i didn't go that route but that way you could print kind of in color you can get like a red and black or a blue and black but either way it's still gonna be like just two colors now how to get these onto your photos it's actually pretty simple uh, it's actually not too difficult and pretty forgiving at least with the paper that i got or the labels that i got it's pretty forgiving if you mess up you can kind of peel it back and stick it back on without too much trouble. You can just use scissors or I would actually recommend a razor blade with a cutting mat and a ruler. I'll leave links to stuff down below, but I just use scissors for mine and it's really simple. All you do is fold it in half and just make a cut and then you can just cut from the inside and all around and then you're good to go. That's all you have to cut. You actually want some overhang. That way you have the ability to fold in the label after you cut it out. And once you get it stuck on there, I like to cut the corners just snips them on the ends. That way it gives it kind of an edge to stick as it folds over on itself. And then once it's folded over, just trim off the little excess and you're good to go, pretty simple. But you can do some cool things with it. There's a lot of variety you could do. And I'll include a download link to this template down below. It will be blank, it'll just be the square. That's all you need. And anything outside of the square is what you, whatever you wanna put. And again, you don't have to worry about cutting it prior. You don't wanna do that. You wanna cut it after you stick it onto your photo makes things so much easier. And I designed these up in Photoshop, but you can use whatever editing software that you use. I just found that this printer printed really easily through Photoshop with no hassle. Get in the right orientation, that is. 
I interrupt this video to bring you something quite delicious, my dudes. A limited edition Make Some Art t-shirt exclusively only during the Halloween special. And don't forget about the Spitfire Club, baby. You get some great perks like exclusive photos, one of a kind, sent to your door every single month. Monthly Zoom calls, exclusive videos, and extended videos, and more. But get this thing before it's gone forever. Now, method number two. This one is a little bit trickier, but it's the same basic process of doing it through the label printer. I designed these up in Photoshop. I then took these and had these printed at like Office Depot, any print shop really. Not all of them, however, have label sticker paper you can print. Sometimes they'll make you go purchase it separately, have them use the paper to print, or you have to supply it yourself altogether. I think Staples is one that doesn't supply it, at least the ones I've been to. Office Depot is where I got this printed and they actually had this and yeah, that was cool. But you can print things in color and then just stick them on. It's the same process. Cut it out just like you would with the label printer and stick them on. Now, this stuff is a little bit less forgiving um, when you uh, put these on. So if you screw up, you're, you screwed up. <laughs> So what I did to test these out was, I used the Polaroid Lab, which just takes a picture of your phone screen and prints a photo onto Polaroids. I did it this way just because that way I had something to test. Uh, and I didn't do that the first time, and I just, this happened. And I'm not too unhappy with it. But here's a picture of Caleb uh, when we were at the Stranger Things experience, and I messed up. But fun fact, I didn't mess up this bad. I ended up making it worse than it was because I thought this actually looked really cool and give it to the aesthetic of the Stranger Things experience. So I actually kind of purposely continued to make it worse. Uh, I added in some things here and there just to kind of make it look like it's torn and destroyed as if it would have been at the Hawkins lab because you know, the lab was a bad place. <laughs> if you've been to the Stranger Things experience, then you know this, but if you haven't, stay tuned until tomorrow's episode where I dive really into it. And it's gonna be a really fun one. You don't wanna miss it, trust me. I set a world record, but more on that later. But these are your groups for the Stranger Things experience. There's three groups that you can get assigned to. You have yellow, red, and blue group, but each group actually has a name. We have intuition for the yellow and strength for red and intelligence for blue. And I thought it'd be really fun to take photos that I had while at the Stranger Things experience and use these frames for those. And I used the Polaroid Lab to print out some cool photos. Again, loosely on the print, because it's not really printing, for lack of a better term. Here's Caleb, Alex, and myself in Seattle, actually. And we were, this is the blue group, even though we were a red group there. Uh, here's me holding up my Guinness World Record I set unofficially. More on that tomorrow's episode. And then me fighting a Demogorgon in San Francisco. And I was the yellow group during this experience show in San Francisco. You can even see it on my wrist. You can see my yellow uh, bracelet. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool to match. But if you mess up, um, like I said, you it, it, too bad. It just happens. Just like this picture of a knop top in front of the Surfer Boy pizza van, I messed up this frame pretty bad. Put it on crooked and I got a little crease in the corner. Is it horrible? Not really, it's still, I think it still looks pretty cool. And then I did the same one with me in front of the Surfer Boy Pizza Van. And this one I actually got a lot better because this, this was my second attempt. And I learned a lot from the first attempt. <laughs> but the sky is really the limit, or I should say your creativity is the limit here. You just gotta come up with some cool ideas and you can do this yourself. I already got some other ideas that I might cook up. Now printing these isn't even that expensive. It's, I wanna say it was like six bucks or so, maybe $7 to have two sheets printed, but there's four per page. And you could cut that cost down if you're buying this paper yourself and then having it printed by somebody or printing it yourself at home. That's always an option too. You can cut that cost way down. But these actually would have been perfect for the label printer, a thermal paper that is, because they do have colors like this. And I really wanted to get them, but it just was cheaper to do it this way <laughs> for because I just want a couple of them. You can't get those in smaller packs, unfortunately. I actually really like my Polaroid Lab. It comes in handy, done some cool things with it. And honestly, this idea I've, I've had for quite a while now because there's some Stranger Things film that I like and those frames are really cool, but they're limited edition and they come and go and then they're gone forever. And I thought, well, why can't Polaroid make something like this? I think there'd be a way to be able to design something on your phone. You could like preview your photo, what it would look like and take a photo, even if it's not a photo that you've already taken. Maybe somehow you could load your own in, but maybe like this and you just put your phone on the top of it and inside 
there's some type of system where it lays the lays the, the label over the top of the photo as it's ejecting out or something. I think that would just be a cool freaking product that Polaroid should make. And if Polaroid, if you make it, I want at least 1% of that profit. <laughs> but I just think there's some way, some, some possibility that that could work and you could have your own unique, custom, one of a kind Polaroid frames. And honestly, again, this will work for all other formats of instant photography. I just chose Polaroid to, for this demonstration. What do you guys think of this? Are you gonna do it? You gonna try it out? If you do, let me know. And tag me over on Instagram if you do. I wanna see what you cook up. That's all I got for you in today's episode, but be sure to tune in tomorrow, sadly, the finale of the Halloween special. But it's gonna be a freaking cool one. I set a world record, baby, unofficially, but still really cool. I'll see you then. Now, get out there, make some art.